Hi, it's Jess here again with my spiral bound journal. So this is part four. I know I said at the beginning it was going to be four parts, but I think it's going to be at least five. Okay, so in this one, we are going to do the envelopes. So there's a couple of envelopes in this journal. So I made this one and I just decorated simply. Oh, and I haven't put anything in it. I did actually, I do lie, I did make this to go in it, just simple pull out, which fits in the envelope perfectly, and then I forgot, this is going to get bound, so it actually needs to be smaller, so I thought, well I'll save that, because I'll probably use an envelope like this size in a journal at some later stage, and I just haven't made, so when I make the one now, I might make two, and then the other envelope is this one. So I stuck that on so that it formed a pocket and just put a simple tag in there. And then we've got a little policy envelope opening and I have put some paper in there for, for writing on. I didn't line this one. So we are going to do those right now. And then we might do a couple of this. That is actually quite tight. Maybe it's supposed to go that way. Yeah, that fits down better. Um, and then if there's time, if this doesn't take too long, I'm going to just do some little finishing touches with some extra tabs that... Um, I've got to do on other pages. So let's flip to where we've got the envelopes in here. So there's an envelope. This one is slightly smaller than that one. So that's a note card envelope. And this is a, a memories more card envelope. I didn't think that they had to be the same. So we'll do this one first because it was quite an easy, quick job. So I am using, only because it's in there, I'm going to use this again. So I just, so it's going to be that way attached. Yeah, so actually I don't think it matters. I just didn't want it to be upside down. So I know that stamp's about there. So we're going to stick that on there. And by using this, I might go up a bit, um, it does allow me to do different colours, which I like. Yep, I might actually put the other, the other magnet in it as well. I very rarely use both magnets, but... am today you've got to be really careful these are so strong that if they actually smash together they would shatter which is why i tend to just use one at a time and i put a little bit of um yeah i'll come down a tad i put a bit of gaffer tape around it for ease of getting it up and down yeah like that except that needs to be the other way around there we go that was a bit of unnecessary faffing right so as i've done before i'm going to um get my pens and uh so we'll get our our mossy meadow I might speed this bit up because you have seen me do this in a previous video. So that's that done. And because it's 
an envelope we're going to put some postage marks on it um i am thinking that that is probably all right yeah nothing on that give it a huff perfect perfect so obviously it's going to get inked i'm just checking what i did because i can't think yeah so that's all i did and then on the other side on the flap i used this which i actually think is going to be a little bit longer um, than this one so just get a bit of paper just in case Just gonna yeah, put that down there. Yep. And then gonna stamp that off. Do like a, a stamped cluster. go and then we want to do a bit of I've managed to get ink on myself we'll do a bit of inking so I'm going to go around the edges like re-inked a stamp pad and so this is quite juicy I didn't let it sink in before I then loaded this up there you go. Do love this shape of an of an envelope flap. So now we'll go around the edges. And I did line it. I just thought it was a nice touch to use some of the book pages from, from this book, which I think is really interesting with all these measurements. I bought another one after this that also had these sort of measures on. It's quite a nice fit, this. I think the other one, I, I cut it the other way, but this is actually quite a good fit. So I might just neaten that edge a bit well I would if it if it worked but it doesn't so let's just see how far down we'll go about there slip down there quite nicely ever so slightly shy of the width there but I'm quite happy with that so I just inked up inked up added glue to the flap a little bit underneath but not much because it will get held in place I'll just use a bit of a glue stick and then a bit too much on there all right, lump there. I'll get rid of that in my bin. Since I moved my bin, it's much more, it's a much better place. I used to have it behind me, and then I had it down to the side of me, just here. And trouble was, I kept dropping things in there. So now I've got it to the other side. So it's next to my desk, but away from everything. And it doesn't involve me having to twist round, which is what I had to do when it was behind me. So push these down a bit more. Got a bit of a wiggle wiggle. That'll do. 
So then we take bone folder, give it a bit of a smooth. Could take it a bit further down if you wanted to, but I'm all right with that. And now I'll just move that out of the way a moment. I'll just follow the edge of the envelope. Glasses would be a good idea at this point, Jess. I am trying it without. Do you know, Ed's out. I've gone for a, an eye test. So he's not on the internet. And um, he works remotely from work. So that uses quite a lot of internet, I think. And um, my mirroring software is working. Not crashed once. So it is him. And I do like it much better. Why not? Do you know, I've just said it's not crashed once. It's just frozen. <laughs> I'm, I'm frozen in time. On my iPad in front of me, I'm frozen at that point. Just exactly at the point where I was saying it's not frozen and it's working all right. So that theory is out the window, isn't it? Can't blame him. Well, I can still blame him. Because... That's his job to be blamed, isn't it? <laughs> so that's that. I'll just do a little bit. Oh, there. Grand. And then the closure. And I just used one of those postage stamps that we made last time. Stuck it down. And that made a really nice closure. So... Just put glue on like half of it or two thirds. Didn't put the lid on this before I stopped for lunch. It's fine, it's flowing again now. So that is that's my envelope and then. I can just add folded up bit of paper to go on the inside. So I've got quite a few scraps. One of those will do. Just got to allow for where the spiral will be. I'll just give it an ink. Down there, put space then for the spiral, and it won't get caught. And that's that bit ready. There we go. So that's ready for in there. And I quite like the fact that we've got the book page there, and that that matches. So I think that's a nice a nice touch. And then we've got this one to do. That's going to have a tab on it. So I'm going to just keep that open. So I know what I'm doing. So I had, I'm going to stick to the same formula. So I had this page here. And I covered, this is Old Olive. I've been using Mossy Meadow up to this point. This is Old Olive. And the reason being was I used doily to go underneath this. And the doily's in Old Olive. And it kind of went with the Edith Holden page. So I'm kind of sticking with that. Um, it was a nice green match. 
but it will actually it's not this particular page but it'll do <laughs> it'll do right so we are going to like we did before let's move you out of the way um we're going to put some glue on this to stick this to so i'm just going to put some glue stick and then glue around the edges you can see where i got the tab out but i used the flowery side so it's the same color but different pattern that's what i love about stamping up color coordination is just amazing of course you can use anything you like you don't have to and i could do the flowery side of this just to be different i might do that actually So we're doing the same, only different. There we go. And then I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to use my long scissors for this bit. I'm doing this a little bit. Backhanded, but hey ho, because I wanted to get in there. Just be careful you don't slice through the envelope because otherwise you'll lose the flap. So that's that bit done. And then I might revert now to a smaller pair and some glasses. I was just checking there, I was still filming because I thought, oh, maybe when I lost contact. turned itself off as well. I've never been gassed. I'm sure if you've ever created a YouTube video and that's happened to you, you get it. There we go. Because sometimes you've only got one sheet of whatever it is you're using. And it's your last sheet and you can't you can't actually video it again because you haven't got that paper anymore. So there's that. May as well cut me tag. Oh, it's dropped. Tiniest space next to my punch shelf. And um, it managed to managed to fall down it. Very clever, Mr. Punch. Not impressed. So we'll decide which way round we want that to be. Now I did this. I inked this. No, I didn't. I did ink it with this. I was thinking I inked it with um, old olive. I didn't. I stamped with old olive. So, and what I also did was I put it's a three by three envelope. So I put a post-it note in there so that I can ink the edges without without messing that bit clever eh I sometimes surprise myself there we go and then we're going to just um, make a tag now to go under it before I um so I'll do the stamping together. So it's going to go like that. So then I cut a tag from there. I've got a few off cuts. Let's have a look. That's a bit thinner than I really wanted. Yeah, it's too thin, Jess. Let's get another off cut. There, uh, we'll just cut one. That's, yeah, we'll cut one that way. So it's three inches wide. So... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two and three quarters, and I can always shave a little bit off if I need to. That should be about right. So 
Let's get the stamping done and then we can get some sticking done and then I'll know whether or not I need to trim a bit off. Oh, look, they're both two and three quarters. I don't think I could have done that if I'd tried. Right, now I'm going to use the littler stamps and um, so I'm bring this in because I actually want to make sure that I can see it. So I want it to be mostly on view. There we go. It is mostly on view. That's nice. And then that one. It's not very it's not very central, Jez. Typically fine. I'm quite happy with that. So I need to do my little my little pose, yeah. So I took a bit of the yellow from this paper this is because i wanted something yellow this is rustic harvest paper available in my shop i'll link down below and i did yeah i did a three quarter of an inch circle there we go put that sheet back and i did um another layer well, that's book page i don't want to use that layer so this is my 120 gsm i'll get a couple of them because i can't find, i can't see the bit of cardstock so just to just to give it a little bit of thickness really that's all So that over time, with the twisting backwards and forwards, it will uh, it will stand up. So there's two bits of 120 gsm, the thickness of the paper themselves, and the glue will make this quite robust. Okay, I'm just going to leave that a sec to dry whilst I get my eyelets. So I've got a nice little green eyelet, not in that one. There. So here's one of these tiny little green eyelets. That'll be grand. I'm going to use our cropper dial, so let's just give this a little bit of an ink round. And the other thing we want is a little half inch circle in the middle. So it's got a bit of a bit of a lift. So We'll cut two of them as well. Wouldn't have needed to, as I say, if I'd done it with a bit of card. So, oops. So just stick that in the middle, just to give it a little bit of a raise up. Help with the, uh, with the twine going in and out so I've got a little bit of old olive thread so I've got some old olive linen thread so I'm just gonna stick that I'm gonna stick it long ways along there because I think it did cause a little bit of um, got caught a little bit right so where's my bit of tear and tape so I'm just going to stick it down oh I sticked it st sticked it down stuck it down with a little bit of parcel tape so 
and it is going to get glued in place as well so it will hold so let's stick it along the bottom just double checking I was along the bottom there I want that to come out the center there we go So that's it's just so it doesn't get caught the tag doesn't get caught going in and out that shouldn't be too bad going down there it is got a little bit but it won't be won't be that bad and I'm going to stick this on there as well so that's going to come up and it's going to round, wind round a few times. So we'll cut, we'll cut it about there. So. Put that there. And that on there. So that's going to go down to there. I might cut a bit of this off and then it's not quite so, got quite so much bulk causing an obstruction. It's still down there, so that'll be better. I'm just going to stick this. down to the page. Like so. So that's that stuck down. Yeah, I still got room for the tag. So now that's dry. We can um, we can add our eyelet. So we want the small hole. So I'm eyeballing that to be in the middle. We'll stick it to this first. <laughs> oh, forgetting what I was doing then. So I'm just putting glue on that centre circle. And sort of a leaf on it, so I want it to sort of be stick it there. Hold it in place whilst I'm waiting for that. Yeah, that'll be okay. I'm just checking if that was the width I used. No, I did go down a little bit more, but there is room. Let me check if this one would go in. No, it's a tight fit. I will slim it down a bit. And actually, if I take a bit off that side, it does make it more in the middle. I might just take an eighth off. There we go. I might make it a little bit shorter. Just doing this by eye. It's not really, really need measurements for this bit. I'm just giving that chance to dry. Let's do our tag top to match. Right, let's do a wee hole. It's good enough for me. Oh. Oh. Did not leave it long enough to dry. Let's 
don't do that at home. <laughs> oh. What I did before was I put a bit of the green on this on it and then punched it. So I think we will do that. So let's cut this up. So I just want to make a rectangle, put it at the top of the tag before I punch my hole. And just fold it in half so that we have that for a little tag topper. I might just make it slightly smaller. Right, so now. Put a bit of that around, put that on the top, eyeball it for the centre. I'll leave that now to dry. Hopefully this is now dry. Put our eyelet in. You could use um, like a brad if you don't have one of these. And then that can now wind round. There we are. So we've got a nice little closure. Probably got slightly too long a piece of thread there, but that's it's okay. Right, and that fit in there quite nicely. Yeah, like that. Have I? Don't think I have. Have I gone over it with this? Just didn't look. Didn't look like it. So I'm going to need a bit of um, a bit of. I had some off cuts when I was trimming my pages, which come in handy for this. That's about the right height. That one's a bit better. And we'll just stick that in there. Put other things in here. This is just just to have something in there, but you could put tickets and all sorts in there. So now I'm going to put glue. Round three sides. So that it forms. A nice pocket. I'm going to stick a block on that now. So now let's turn to this tag here and we'll get our punch again. And we've got our slot there. So I am eyeballing that. Be the center. Perfect. There we go. And then I put some, I've got some white ribbon, which I know I had out here. There it is. So a bit of white ribbon. About that much. And I've got an alcohol marker. 
the same colour. I've got old olive blend and so I can colour my ribbon. So it's all lovely matchy matchy. Leave that to dry a little bit. Doesn't take long because it's alcohol. So I'm just gonna think I'll round these corners and the edges. And then we'll just come in with our sponge. Think about having a nice simple tag like this. It doesn't add bulk as well. So there we go, nice and simple. Is this now dry? A bit on the paper. Yep, it is. So, thread that from behind. See the perfect colour match. Come in with my ribbon scissors. There we go. That's our tag. Can add words later if I want to, but for the moment, that is. All I want to do. And then that goes in like that. And yeah, there's no obstruction there like there was with the other one. I can pull it up a little bit so I can see that flower. So that is the original. There we go. So, yeah, I've stuck to the same design. It does make life easier. That goes there. So here we are. That's our page. That's our Edith Holden page. I think we'll do the opposite and put that brown one on there. And I did trim it a little bit because um, with the tab, puts it closer to the the spine where it's actually going to be bound. So I'll just take that little sliver off, which should hopefully be enough to not be interfered with. So we'll just do a little bit. A little bit of inking around this. And that's that page done. Now I'm just going to check how long I've been. So, yeah, I think I've got time to do the next bit. So this page here with the music sheet. Now the music sheet is quite thin because it's quite old. And so one of the things I like to do over book pages is put a doily. So I've got a tea stain doily here. And um, so I just fold it in half. Like so I'm just going to snip that little bit there where there's an extra bit on there that we don't really want. And I just... glue it in place, gives the page a little bit of extra strength, gives it a bit of uh, decoration and um, adds a little bit of interest. So I'm just looking, I'm going to fold it the other way. There's like a wrong side and a right side to a doily. So. There we go. So just going to glue it down. So that's that glue all over. And so I'm just going to put this right up in there.
Move it over and then we'll just take a little card. Thin enough so you can still see through it. So I'm just going to cut the tops. Top off there. And off there. And I did add a bit of stamping there in the centre. Just need to clean that because that's got old olive on it. Do it the right way up so it's going that way. So I'll do that one so it matches slightly with that flower. And then I'll do this one on the other side. There we go. My glass mat is wobbling. I do apologise. So that was that. And then I put a tab on this one. And I just stamped stamped that ledger a few times. Fold it over for that there. Which I think is quite a nice little touch. Okay, and then there was just one more tab um, on this sheet here. Um, so I'm going to do that again and put the tab on there. So that is now it all complete. And so all we need now is decorate the cover and add the spiral. So yeah, I'm hoping that's not now become too thick for my one inch spiral. We shall see. So do join me then in part five, which will be the final part of this spiral band journal. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're crafting along with me, um, I hope. Um, I hope it works because <laughs> that would be terrible. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed that it will work.